All right, so when we left off, we were talking about allowing removed participants to rejoin. I like to have that on because sometimes maybe you'll accidentally remove someone, you just might click wrong. And if you remove them and this is off, they cannot come back into the Zoom room. So you wanna have that on because if you accidentally remove someone, you wanna allow them to be able to rejoin. Um, allow participants to rename themselves. I'm actually gonna turn that off because I don't want the kids to change their names to something goofy that I won't know who they are, especially if they turn their camera off. So I, I don't allow them to rename themselves. Maybe you'd want to, but you also as the host have the power to rename kids too. Uh, so I like to turn that off so that if we need to rename someone, I can be in control of what that name is. Um, and then hide participant profile pictures in a meeting. That doesn't really matter. It's up to you however you wanna do that one. Um, Report participants to Zoom. I have this turned on because if we do get someone who bombs our Zoom, who comes in inappropriately and is sharing inappropriate things, and they're not one of our students, we can report that participant to Zoom so that something is done. Here's where you get to turn on your breakout rooms. Okay, you need to turn that on in order for your Zoom rooms to have breakout room capabilities. And we'll talk about how to use those in other videos later. Um, but remote support, allow meeting host to provide one-to-one -one remote support to another participant. I like to turn that on because it allows us to be able to help kids a little more effectively. Um, closed captioning, allow host to type closed captions or assign a participant to add closed captions. You can turn that on, um, but you're making the closed captions. They're not automatically generated for you. Just keep that in mind. Um, you can also save the captions that you've used before if you're doing something similar. Um, you can turn it on or you can leave it off. It's up to you however you want to do it. Um, far end camera control, don't worry about that. I just leave that one off. The virtual background, that means you can have like, that's where people have like those paintings that, that they use as a background or the American flag or whatever. You can have that turned on in case people want to do virtual backgrounds. I'm going to leave it on. You can turn it off if you don't want people to use virtual backgrounds. Um, same with video filters. I'm actually going to turn that off because I want your video to be normal. Um, but if you want to add a background so that I don't see your house, that's fine with me. Um, identify guest participants in the webinar. Um, so this one, again, is a preference. Um, most of the people who are going to come in are gonna be people in our network, right? They're gonna be school district of lacrosse emails. So if you turn that on, it'll just tell you like this email that's signing in is not a school district of lacrosse email um, type of thing. Auto answer in group chat. Um, this isn't gonna matter if you don't have those individual things turned on. Um, the rest of these are once again, um, just, like personal preference. This one particularly I wanna show you though, um, allow participants to bypass the Zoom application download process and join a meeting directly from their browser. This is a workaround for participants who are unable to download, install, run applications. You're gonna want that one on because then if kids haven't been able to download the Zoom app, they can still get into the Zoom meeting. And then these are all just kind of like little piddly things. Um, that you can change around if you want to about like what your invitation looks like and all of that kind of stuff. So that's just really the basic overview of all of the settings that you can play around with. Um, but a lot of them are really your personal preference. The important ones again are going to be down here in the in meeting basic. You're going to want to make sure that your breakout rooms are turned on. Right. Um, and uh, you can't do remote support if your breakout room is on. So you can decide which one you want to have on. I choose to have the breakout rooms on, but um, make sure to uh, have those breakout rooms turned on. And if you have questions, let me know.